Many people are familiar with the term logical fallacies. This is just another term for the different kinds of sophisms. We are going to examine just a few of the more common ones. One kind of sophism is the mistake of the question. It occurs when something else is proved which does not have a connection to, or is not consistent with, the matter we are looking into. The end result gives no determination to what we were inquiring about. The conclusion is not true. This sophism is also commonly known as the straw man or red herring. It is a diversionary tactic away from the true matter. For example, one could conclude that the Apostle Paul was not a native Jew by proving that he was born a Roman, or one could conclude that he was neither Roman nor Jew because he was born in Tarsus in Cilicia. These sophisms are refuted by showing that all three are correct. His parents were Jewish, and by some peculiar privilege granted to his parents or his native city, he was also born as a denizen of Rome. Focusing on the wrong facts, outside facts, or only certain facts, can lead to a wrong conclusion, but sound right. That is why it is vitally important for us to take time and examine the evidence for any conclusion, even if it appears right. Another kind of sophism is called supposition of what is not granted. It happens when any proposition is supposedly proved by the same proposition, just in other words, or by something that is equally uncertain or disputed. For example, the human soul is extended through all the parts of the body. The soul resides in every member. Or, Jack believes what he himself says. Jack is not lying. Jack is telling the truth. That is using a proposition to prove the same proposition. It is wrong. Circular reasoning is a sophism where one of the premises in a syllogism already claims or assumes the conclusion is true. For example, he will make a good governor because he is the best man for it. Or, we know the rock is one million years old because we know the fossils that are in the rock are one million year old because. This is circular reasoning. The conclusion cannot be used to prove the syllogism. A true syllogism will come to a correct conclusion. One of the most common sophisms in daily life is assignation of a false cause. It is when any two accidental events happen to occur at the same time and one is supposed to be the cause of the other. When righteous Job was surrounded with various miseries and calamities, his own friends supposed that these were happening to him because he was an unrepentant sinner, which was not true. Christianity in past history was blamed by the heathens with all the calamities and disasters that befell the Roman Empire because the Christians renounced the heathen gods and idols. We must have an honest and diligent inquiry into the real nature, evidence, and cause of things, and we must be watchful against all those prejudices which might warp our judgment aside from truth. Another common sophism or logical fallacy is called Felicia Accidentis. It is where we make a judgment about the nature and essential properties of any subject according to something that is merely accidental to it. For example, some could say that learning and printing may have been the accidental cause of sedition in a state. Learning and printing may have been remotely and accidentally involved, but it was not the cause. Or some may say Reading of the Bible by accident has been abused to promote heresies or destructive errors. It is called accidental because it is not necessary to the other to occur. It is not related nor the cause. This sophism also occurs when we try to argue that things that are true only in particular circumstances are true absolutely regardless of circumstances. For example, some may say that the famed historian Livy 
also wrote fables and other improbabilities when he described prodigies and omens, so therefore we should not believe his account of Roman history? The natures and circumstances are different, and they should be considered in light of them, not without them. For a modern example, some people say that they don't believe in God because of all the evil that Hitler did. That is a deceitful argument, because it wrongly connects two ideas. After all, if there was no God, then what is wrong with what Hitler did? They are unrelated. Make sure that your ideas are not wrongly connected. This sort of sophism, unfortunately, has its reverse also. It is used to argue that things which are true absolutely are true even in circumstances which may prove the exception. For example, Scripture declares the broad and absolute truth that thou shalt not kill. However, it also provides exceptions and circumstances where this cannot be applied. A murderer cannot use thou shalt not kill to keep himself from execution when Scripture makes it clear that murderers are to be punished by capital punishment. The sophisms of assignation of a false cause and felicia accidentis are easily solved by showing the difference between things in their absolute nature and the peculiar circumstances that may surround them. The sophism of composition is when we take truths that apply to ideas only in a divided sense and apply it to a compound idea. For example, Scripture tells us that even the worst of sinners may be saved. We should not wrongly conclude that the compound idea of all sinners are automatically saved from their sins, because Scripture declares that each individual must repent of their sins and be saved. Sometimes this sophism can be used to wrongly lump ideas together that should not be. To say, of all the compounded inhabitants of Boston are rude, just because a few individuals are rude, is false logic. The sophism of division is the opposite of that. When what is true in a compound sense is wrongly assumed to be true in the divided sense. For example, five is one number. The divided sense is two and three. Two and three are not one number, even though five is one number. Perhaps the largest and most extensive kind of fallacy is the sophism of equivocation. It is the abuse of the ambiguity of words making them appear equal when they are not. One obvious example of this sophism is, He that sends forth a book into the light desires it to be read. He that throws a book into the fire sends it into the light. Therefore, he that throws a book into the fire desires it to be read. This sophism is resolved by showing the different senses of the words, terms, or phrases. Here, Light is the major proposition, signifying the public view of the world, and in the minor it signifies the brightness of flame and fire, and therefore the syllogism has four terms, or, or rather it has no middle term, and it proves nothing. There is no connection, even though the terms are the same. Testing Syllogisms Since the terms in every syllogism are usually repeated twice, we must examine that they are taken precisely in the same sense in both places. The greatest part of mistakes that rise in forming syllogisms usually comes from some little difference in the sense of one of the terms in the two parts of the syllogism. An example of false logic, it is a sin to kill a man. A murderer is a man. Therefore, it is a sin to kill a murderer. When we examine this syllogism, we find that the word kill, in the first proposition, signifies to kill unjustly, or without law. In the conclusion, it is used in an absolute sense, for putting a man to death in general, and therefore the conclusion is not good, because the terms mean different things. An example of true logic would be, it is a sin to kill a man. God commands authority that murderers should die. Therefore, it is not sin for government to exercise capital punishment. And, therefore, 
it is a sin for government to shed innocent blood. In this syllogism, we find that the ideas and terms are the same sense, but the absolute sense of the first proposition is tempered by the circumstances and exceptions presented in the second proposition, providing a true conclusion. Always make sure that terms and ideas are used in the same sense and agree.